Hello and welcome back to Olive Boy Pens. I am back to take you on another little trip through pens. pens. I am back to take you on a little trip through history and the present to talk about two pens under one name. The Aurora 88. The original Aurora 88 was released in 1946 and has often been said to have been inspired by the Parker 51s that were being brought over by American GIs during World War II. After multiple design updates throughout the years, uh, adding features, removing features, there's some cartridge filling versions, also known as the Duo Cart, which I will also be checking out in a different video. The Aurora 88, as you would know it from the original model, was discontinued at kind of the peak of the fountain pen, the fountain pen's demise in the mid 70s to 80s. However, relatively soon after, in 1989, a new Aurora 88 surfaced. However, this pen is only an 88 in name, more or less, and we'll get into that obviously, but. What I'm going to do in this video, as I've done before, is compare the original Aurora 88 from 1946 to a very recently released Aurora 88 model, the uh, Black Mamba. This is an interesting one because they bear so little resemblance at the surface to each other and under the cap mostly. But I still think it's worth looking at maybe why they made this move, and I'm going to be speculating on that as well. So, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's take a look at these two Aurora 88s, starting as usual with the vintage one. So, the vintage 88 is actually a decently sized pen by modern standards, and a kind of medium to large one by vintage standards. Uh, it's 137 millimeters long from top to bottom. Um, and it's, I would say, a decent size, uh, decent weight, 22 grams uninked, as this one is. You may have noticed that this is a slip cap mechanism, no click, uh, similar to the Parker 51's uncapping mechanism. It's got those leaf springs on the inside of the cap that you can't really see, but they are there. And it fits nicely. I, I trust it in a pocket. The body is made out of a mixture of a couple of different materials. Uh, this is uh, what they call a Nic Argenta in Italian. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly. But uh, it's it's kind of a silver-plated cap situation. You can see some pitting on there. Uh, it's hard to find a really clean example of one of these. The body is a mixture of celluloid and hard rubber, which is kind of interesting. You don't see that very often. And you can kind of tell... Uh, being that, you know, it's aged over time, the celluloid remains nice and smooth and glossy, but the ebonite, as it often does, can discolor or tarnish with time. So, I think that when this pen originally came out, it must have seemed just like a solid black pen, but over time, you know, uh, the, the pen has changed colors. I do like the use of ebonite on the section. It makes it for a nice holding experience. It's a decent girth. Uh, you've got the Aurora logo here. I want to see if I can catch it in the light. Yeah, the Aurora 88 logo here. There's a little scratch on mine, but not a big deal. And the nib. Uh, the nib, of course, uh, you know, being that this pen is inspired by the likes of the Parker 51. It is a hooded nib. It is a gold nib, as you know, pens of this era most likely were. And as you will see in the writing sample, it is a very nice one. Uh, it is a semi-flex, maybe even full flex, uh, nice, you know, great flow. And that is backed up excellently by the fact that this pen is a piston filler. So turn the knob. It's kind of hard to see, but there's an ink window here. I wish I could show you some way, but the uh, the seal is a is a cork piston seal, which is you know pretty standard of the era. You know, vintage Pelicans have got that too, and yeah, it holds a decent amount of ink, which is nice with a with a nib as 
you know, nice and flexy is this one. Overall, this is a pen that I've been using a lot for drawing just because the nib is nice and fine, it holds a lot of ink, and it's a pretty attractive looking pen in my opinion. If not, you know, a little bit, a little bit weird kind of, it, you know, the balance of like the little bands and the, the hooded nib make it just a kind of unusual looking pen in my opinion, but charming nonetheless. Now, let's move on to the 88 Black Mamba. So, of course, the original version of the 88 that came out in 1989, I don't know why they couldn't have rushed that a year earlier, but the original 88 that came out was just black with gold trim, uh, you know, very, very standard, very sober affair, um, and over the years of multiple, you know, crazy cellular releases, so you got your metal sections, you got your whatever, you got your gold and rose gold and your silver and your black trims, millions of different <laughs> configurations have come out since then, but this is a relatively recent one, uh, the Black Mamba, which was a series of 888 pens, um, that retailed for $716 at most online retailers, which is pretty bonkers, especially considering, you know, the this base model pen was nowhere near that in, in 1946 money. This pen is a plastic pen, which I did not know until I first uh, had experience with it. I thought this was going to be a metal pen like the Schaefer Legacy, but in fact it is a chased pen, uh, which you may see that term applying to vintage, you know, turn of the century ebonite pens, but it is the same deal. It's an engraved pattern on plastic, uh, which I think is a very striking look and of course, you know, is referencing snakeskin, Black Mamba, you get it. Uh, you got the Aurora logo in this kind of like, like a race car. <laughs> I don't know why it's a race car font to me, but it's very like Italian sports car. A lot of this yells Italian sports car to me. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, it's quite a striking look pen. Uh, you've got some metal hardware, uh, of course the cap band, the, uh, little band here for where the piston turning knob is. And then the clip are all plated in this kind of like black, black lacquer coating. I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's a lacquer E coating. And upon uncapping, so this is a twist cap, which is the first difference you will notice, besides, of course, the body. Then you've got the ink window, and then a totally different nib. So that is the main point of contention for people in terms of calling this an 88, because there never was an open-nibbed 88. Um, and, you know, open-nib is referring to the fact that there's nothing covering this. A hooded nib is, like, the original one, hooded, like, covered by a hood. Uh, there's, of course, a section uh, on which is engraved the limited edition number, which is quite hard to pick up on the camera. There it is. Found it. Boom. Uh, so this is number 810 out of 888. Uh, and this has been filled, ironically, with uh, Lamy Vibrant Pink. And I say ironically because Mike, who lent me this pen, thank you again, Mike, uh, Filled it with pink because he thought it would be funny to put a hot pink ink in a, you know, super stealthed out pen. The nib on here, it is open, yes. It is also a hard to capture on camera nib. 18 karat gold. It is a fine, which is marked on the bottom of the feed. Uh, the feed being ebonite, which is nice, especially for a pen of this caliber. And it is a fine. And it is also quite tricky to write with. And I will explain that in a moment. It is in no way flexible. Aurora does make all of their nibs in-house, which is cool. It's nice to see that. I appreciate it in a company. Um, in under most circumstances. Uh, and we'll get into that in a second. But uh, it's nice looking. It definitely complements the pen well. Uh, the engraving is very fine and, and very precise. This pen is pretty much the same length as the vintage one. It's It's, I think, maybe very slightly shorter and thicker definitely definitely thicker but the same weight actually I, I measured it within a gram of the original uh one this is 21 grams which is kind of crazy to me I, I really did think it would be a lot heavier let's get to the real important part of this video which is comparing the writing experiences of these two pens 
Uh, we're going to start off with the vintage one. All right, let's get to writing. Before the sun goes down. So this is the original Aurora 88. I actually kind of like this one posted. It posts deeply and just kind of gives the, gives the pen a nice weight. So let's get into it. The Aurora 88, 1946. And I'm going to call this an extra fine. By modern standards, for sure. Probably a fine by vintage standards. It is indeed a semi flex. Uh, the ink I'm using is Montblanc Elvis Blue. This nib is, I mean, I mean, like, yeah, right? <laughs> this is exactly the kind of content you guys are here for. Just really good words. This nib is fabulous. I, I, I am in love with it. I use it all the time. It is the perfect amount of fineness when you don't want anything special. You know, you just want to just draw a little something. And the perfect amount of expressive when you want to have some pizzazz. I hate... I hate writing a cursive Z. I don't know why I decided to write pizzazz, but here we are. You can see there's a fair amount of difference between the fully flexed and the non-flexed. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a piston filling flex nibbed pen. What, what isn't there to like? Let's finish it off with a little nib drawing. That's kind of, that's it. That's it right there. So, excellent writer, if not kind of a weird looking pen. Now, for honestly, I don't want to spoil you guys, the opposite, the modern uh, Aurora 88, the Black Mamba. The... I want to say 2019, but that's probably wrong. This is a fine 18 carat nib. Right out of the gate, this nib is dry and pretty scratchy. It does write. Like, I'll give it that. It does, like, there's a line here. I did it on purpose. I guess it does technically get the job done. But this is by no means a pleasant experience. I found that it's slightly more pleasant when written with at a high angle. Which is like fine. I guess, you know, maybe it has a sweet spot. But this is like a really aggressively high angle that I'm writing with right now. Most normal fountain pen users I know are somewhere around here, if not like here. And both of those are just not great. If I write quickly with it. You can tell it's just like super, super dry and it doesn't have any particular amount of bounce to it at all. Not that that's necessarily expected out of this kind of pen. It's in no way billed as a flex nib, but that's about as comfortable as I am pushing this nib. It is 18 karat after all. You could totally spring it. Um, another thing that I'll note too is that the black plating, although it does look nice, you know, it's kind of hard to see the engraving. And also, I have heard that you have to be very gentle. You have to be very gentle with this nib because if you, you know, scrub it too hard while you're cleaning it or, or you put it in an ultrasonic bath to really thoroughly clean it as you might need to with the piston filling system on modern Aurora pens, it could completely lose plating or lose it in, in, in certain parts, which is really a shame um, because... A, you know, it shouldn't do that. It's a seven hundred dollar pen, but B, Aurora piston fillers are notoriously difficult to clean because they have a secondary. Aurora calls it a secondary ink reservoir, which means that the 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 piston, you know, that draws the ink up, you know, it seals against the outside of the barrel or the inside of the barrel, but it also has this little cup here. And ink gets stuck in here when it's full, right? Which would be really hard to clean. Um, but then Aurora's feed kind of like sticks out. 
So when you're fully empty the pen, you can theoretically get that pool of ink into this little knob by, you know, screwing the piston all the way forward. Now that doesn't really particularly work. Uh, and, and the ink that you get out of there and the ink that stays in here are going to be, it's going to be tough basically. And that's, that's a well-documented thing with Aurora's, you know, you kind of live with it. Most of the time it's worth it. I would say in this time with this nib, probably not, probably not to me, but you know, that's neither here nor there. That is more or less the objective information I can give you on these. You know, the little spicy opinion popped in there every once in a while. Let's get over to my final thoughts on these two lovely Italian beauties. Well, I hope you found those up-close and personal looks at these two pens interesting. I am once again disappointed by the wonders of modern manufacturing, you'd call them. It's starting to seem like a pattern, and it's hard to believe that this is luck. I was really under the impression that things get better <laughs> over time. No, that's a lie. I don't believe that. That's not true. The fact of the matter is that, alike a lot of vintage versus modern pens, the Aurora 88 was meant to be a pen that got used all the time. And that reflects a lot in its design. It's a very utilitarian pen. Um, whereas I feel like, again, like a lot of other modern remakes and just modern pens in general, the Aurora 88 Black Mamba and just kind of in general has a lot of theater about it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's got the really eye-catching design. It's got the cool font. It's got the, it's got the matte black trim, which is fragile and will flake off over time, I'm told. The piston is hard to clean out and that, that I could go either way on because you could say that about a lot of vintage filling systems because a lot of people weren't using, you know, the 50 colors of ink people use these days. And I say that as one of those people. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm not going to necessarily fault it for that because that's a problem that plagues or is just kind of part of the necessary evil of using a fountain pen. They can be a pain to clean, but didn't have to be. Really didn't. The, 88, the original 88, a lot easier to clean, even though it has a literal cork piston seal. So... It's hard to say. I use this all the time. I mean, it's also, I've had more time with it, but the fact that the nib on this being as bad as it is, is shameful, especially at the MSRP of this. I know the person who, uh, Mike, who I'm borrowing this pen from, did not pay anything close to that, but the MSRP of like $700 for this pen is mind-boggling for the fact that the nib doesn't work as it should. And I mean, I've seen, obviously, there was a, a period of time where I feel like every other post on Reddit was about how somebody got their $1,200 limited edition Visconti Homo Sapiens and the nib tines were like, <laughs> but it's just like, I, I, I can't explain it. And I, I feel for the difficulty of quality control within pen companies because it is a very fiddly thing to do as somebody who does it on a much, like an infinitesimally smaller scale than a pen company. Like, even on a, such a limited run pen as 888, you gotta imagine that there's a lot more pens going through the Aurora factory they're making them all in house and all that, you know, but how do you, like, how do you solve that problem? You'd figure they would have solved it by now. And clearly they haven't because we're still getting $700 pens with nibs that just are jank, just bad, just bad nibs, man. So that's all I have to say on that. They're different. They're, it's, it's hard to compare them. Uh, this is a vintage pen. This is a modern pen, right? That's really all there is that you can compare them by. You can't compare them on the basis that 
one of them is an Aurora 88 and the other one is an Aurora 88. And it's up to you to decide which one of them is the, is the real one and which one of them is the clone. Uh, it's, it's the vintage one because it happened first. That's my opinion. So, yes, this is an Aurora 88 in name only. Doesn't make it a bad pen necessarily. It just happens to have aspects of it that make it a bad pen on its own right. But it's strange because I so desperately want to like it. It is a pen that feels excellent in the hand. It is gorgeous. It is really good looking. And it's comfortable in the hand. And I will be tuning this up before I send it back to Mike so he can derive more enjoyment from it. But I found that, you know, there's a couple angles where it writes nicely. The nib is nowhere near as good as the one on the Vintage 88, and that's, you know, that's kind of par for the course in terms of vintage versus modern. But I wish it was just because modern nibs aren't like they used to make them and not because the nib was bad out of the box, which is not what anyone should come to expect or excuse. And that's coming from me, who has... I've seen, I've seen a fair amount. Of, I feel like I've seen more nibs than your average person, like, in my life. Because I handle them all the time. Like, it, for work. That's, I think that's all I have to say. I, I, uh, I went off the rails a little bit there talking, waxing philosophical about the nature of progress. Well, I, uh, I gave away the twin point. By the time I haven't, not not right now. I still have it, but by the time this video goes up, I will have given it away. I'll do something cool again at a thousand. I guess I have to one up myself. So look out for that, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more vintage versus modern. I think the next one that will likely go up after this is two pens that I actually own. Not I'm not borrowing any this time. Uh, it is the Kaweco 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 Sport uh, Skyline Sport in the mint, which is the modern one, if you can tell and uh, the Vintage V16 Sport, which is one of my favorite pens. Uh, it's a pen I use very frequently. So I'm excited to show you the differences between the two of them next time on All of Boy Pens. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe again if you want to see more. Leave a comment if you enjoy what I'm doing over here, and I will see you next time, hopefully. Thanks, everyone.